Welcome back. In this video, we're going to take a deeper dive into some Reddit posts I found. Let's dive in. The first post I wanted to take a look at was posted on the Let's Not Meet subreddit by a Redditor using a throwaway account on March 13th of 2023. Incurred the wrath of a neo-Nazi at a previous job. I worry that my actions may have caught up with me. Footage included. This is my first time posting here. I've always loved coming here to read wild stories, but unfortunately, I seem to have found myself in a situation where I now have something worth putting up. Background. Before I completed my college education, I worked at a local food service job at a major chain of supermarkets. It was a pretty shitty gig, but honestly, I got to be relatively lax about my duties in the winter, as this town was a heavy summer tourist town. I'm not snobbish about work, and I appreciate the locals most of the time as they're nice people, so I had a good time. That said, as anyone who has worked in retail or food service generally know, you are bound to have some problem customers. Usually it's someone who's impatient or perhaps someone who's unwilling to listen or demands that you check in the back. I'm fine with that. I give people the benefit of the doubt, but one day, in the winter around 6 or 7 in the evening on a closing shift, I had a run-in with someone who I couldn't give the benefit of the doubt. Cutting to the chase, here's what happened. A man in his late 40s to early 50s came up to me, wearing typical late fall garb. I asked him what sort of order he wanted. He replied, do you know where you're going to go when you die? Naturally, I raised an eyebrow, but I figured he was one of these annoying evangelical types. I've dealt with them before. You usually just take the pamphlet, endorse some platitudes, and then tell the manager on duty they need to warn that person. So I just gave the canned answer and deflected the question. After some awkward discussion, he brought up the fact that I was wearing a pride pin. Our company gives these to us during pride month, and also brought up the fact that based on my name tag, my appearance, and a necklace that I had thought I had hidden under my apron, that I was Jewish. Naturally, he went on about how he didn't think this sat right with his worldview. I started to get irate, but again, this is not out of the ordinary. Usually these types would pray for me or feel bad for me. This is where the assumption fell flat. He, in a cruel way, said that that thing that happened during World War II was actually a good thing, intended by God perhaps, and it was in fact an impotent solution if you talking to me is anything to go by. I started to see red and was a bit shocked. I told him to get away from the counter and that this conversation was over. He played dumb because people started to look over due to my raised voice. I'm an extremely meek person and I don't really think anyone had ever seen me act anywhere near that level. We were just talking, he said. He wouldn't budge. I went out around the counter into the store floor and pointed to the exit, insisting that he leave before I called the manager on duty. He didn't and I ended up dialing the MOD on the department floor. He gave me a death glare before finally walking deeper into the store instead of the nearby exit. The MOD and one of the department leads came over to see what happened, and I explained the story, the man's appearance, etc. They found him and ushered him out. After giving HR a lengthy statement the next morning, they informed me that he was no longer allowed in the store again, or in any of the regional stores for that matter. To put this in perspective, at the time I was living in a very rural community. That is the only supermarket for miles. To go to another one of a different branding would be a one and a half hour trip there, plus another one and a half hour trip back. Effectively, he had been fucked over, though obviously not without good reason. I was pleased to see how my employer had defended me promptly without using the customer is always right bullshit to their credit. Not long after, I began seeing at least two distinct people walking through the department with hoodies that had 1488 and bedazzled on the right sleeve with their hoods up, occasionally looking over my way. Sometimes they would even walk by multiple times in the same direction, and never with a cart. After a week or two of this happening, and the end of spring semester coming to a close, I turned in my two weeks notice early. In the intervening period between then and my return to college out of state, my home, well my parents' home, had gotten a mailbox smashed and mail torn. The neighbor's ring camera caught it parked in front of their property while idling, and it was a large dark truck. Not very specific but it had some bumper stickers with some very kind choice of words for a certain minority groups. So you get the idea. The police noted it down, but they didn't have an idea what group could have done this. With some digging and talking to the people who had lived in the area far longer than my parents and I had, there was indeed a local group of neo-Nazis the town over, and were not very subtle about it considering their gatherings, their choice of fashion, and their bumper stickers. I went back to college. My parents reported not much further activity. I guessed it was because my car was gone and because I no longer worked at the supermarket. I finished up school there and came back to a lucrative job offer in my field about 45 minutes away from my parents' place and about 30 minutes away from that supermarket in a bigger city as opposed to a rural area. In the next section of this post, the OP details an encounter that happened shortly after they came back into town 
and also included videos of this event. A few nights ago, I was sitting at my desk in my apartment building, playing D&D online with some college friends who I kept in touch with. I've been in this apartment for a very short amount of time, but I love it, other than the fact that I have to face a huge parking structure. It's not a huge deal though, as by the time I go to bed, nobody really drives in and out, so no headlights blasting me in the face. Around midnight, I noticed out of the corner of my eye, a pickup truck driving up to my level in the parking garage. I don't make much of it, but suddenly it diagonally parks across the path and faces me directly. There are very few apartments in my building, and I'm near the end, so it was unlikely that they were looking at someone above or below me. That being said, it's odd that they would have not been parked there, but paid a mission just to drive up to my level and do this, and not go to the other person's floor. I ignore it, and go back to D&D, until I noticed that the pickup truck driver started flashing his high beams on and off rapidly in an unusual pattern. He keeps doing it, so I pull out my phone to record. He must have seen this, so he starts driving. He slows down and stops again, just sitting there. Here's the first video. After a while, he drove off. I was quite weirded out, but it's the city. Weird shit happens. Probably a mistaken identity or trolling or whatever. But after a few more seconds, I see the truck pull around on the next floor down and just stop in the middle of the path, completely still. Again, I wonder if he's looking at me or just another apartment near me. I try to check this by waving him on, basically mentioning to get the fuck out. He immediately reacts by driving forward and down to the next floor. So he was definitely looking at not only my apartment, but me directly. At this point, I'm concerned because it's not hard to find out what number my apartment is based on where the windows are located on the outside of the building. Here's the second video. I really didn't want to think he would stop at the next floor down, but my curiosity was still high and I waited. Sure enough, he did. This time, he parked directly at the window so I could see him from the very steep angle downward. I just stared, but this time instead of flashing his lights, I saw the door open and he stepped out gesturing a bit. I saw him start to reach for something or fiddle with something on his person, so I stopped recording and got away from the window. He started yelling at the top of his lungs, though I couldn't understand what he was saying exactly due to the distance the objects between us, and me focusing on turning off the lights and closing the blinds. I did so, and waited in my bedroom. Here's the third video. I waited in my room for about 10 to 15 minutes and peeked out the side of the other room's window. He was not at the same spot as before. I looked down at the street and saw that the truck had actually parked up the road from me near the start of my street. For context, this is a one-way street. The parking garage opens up two ways. One, into my street but down the street from my apartment. You would have to go down the street and do a five to 10 minute circle around the district I'm in just to get to where he parked. The second way is on the other side, into a public square and do a 10 plus minute loop to get to the start of my street. Either way, he definitely knew what he was doing. And if I thought it was a prank or temporarily weird behavior at first, I didn't as of then. The truck was empty and he wasn't inside. Thankfully, my apartment has a locked front door and my door has multiple locks and a deadbolt, plus a peephole that has a swinging cover. I waited, but nobody seemed to come up to my door as far as I could tell. About an hour after the truck had first parked there, it was gone. I have a meeting with my property manager tomorrow I want to make sure that this problem is not a pre-existing one so I can rule it out. I'm easy to do a people search on due to my job and networking from it. In addition, my full name on my name tag was visible at the deli for multiple years. I worry that coming back to this area and getting a job slash putting myself out there has brought back people from my past, specifically people who think I'm subhuman and who I fucked over at that. I don't trust the cops on principle no matter where I live. They've been known in this area specifically to have some really nasty ties. I'll call them if it gets worse, yes. But for now, I'm not involving them or bringing them into my apartment. I hope this was appropriate for the sub. 
I'm so really creeped the fuck out. Thanks all. The commenters on this post expressed their concerns for the OP right away, and a Redditor by the name of Runner20MPH would also share their personal encounters with individuals like these. You don't want to hear this. It's best to take your parents and leave. As a Muslim American, my family has had this same experience in part of our state that harbored some hate groups. We were there for a year because the company my father worked for needed him there. Unlike you, I didn't do anything back. However, it didn't matter. We started hearing knocks on our door and windows at different times of the night. Anyways, my family is Afghan American. And once my uncles and cousins found out, they came over for a week. However, we made sure it was not obvious. Fortunately, my uncles and cousins are mad. They kept night watch while my family slept. My elder cousins would laugh a lot while planning out what they would do to the Nazis. They waited for the knocks. One night, right at that moment, these people started banging and knocking at the windows and doors. My whole family burst out with bats. They beat the hell out of these guys until the police came. We left shortly after that because we feared revenge. However, I'm quite happy that the Nazis got whacked. Other users would share their concerns for the OP as well. Jesus, that's horrifying. I hope you're doing okay now. Better now for sure. Been careful in terms of where I go and what time and with whom. But generally, I'm not trying to let it affect me beyond simply being vigilant. If I did, they've accomplished part of their goal which is to induce paranoia. I can't have them having any sort of victory. You should have a male friend or security officer walk you to and from your car at all times and definitely get some pepper spray or even a taser if your state allows them so you can have something to defend yourself with if it comes to that. Never walk alone if possible. I am so sorry that you have to deal with this. It sounds absolutely terrifying. Put your safety first at all times. Thankfully, I have a means to defend myself now. I'm also a male myself, and without giving away too much info, I generally consider myself an intimidating guy physically, regarding of my actual disposition. Going forward, I'm gonna continue surrounding myself with friends and co-workers when I can, and make sure I'm careful if for some reason, I really must go out alone, or at a late slash isolated hour. Thanks for the well wishes. If job prospects go well later this year, I'll likely be moving, so it won't be a forever problem. Unfortunately, due to this being posted onto a throwaway account, I was unable to find any updates, as it's likely that the OP stopped checking on the post soon after they uploaded it. We can only hope that they managed to get one of those job prospects they were talking about, and were able to get out of the situation unharmed. I have been checking on this post for a few months now to see if anything developed, but to my knowledge, there have been no updates. So, like many of the other posts on Reddit, we're left to speculate on what ultimately happened. Staying on the Let's Not Meet sub, I found this post uploaded by the user Pity42 on August 9th of 2023, where they detail a terrifying encounter with the man who showed up at the OP's home. I recorded the moment a guy came to my house with a gun. Video at end of post. I am in university right now, but staying with my parents at their house for the summer. I was hanging out with one of my friends when we decided to go to a party. I met this guy around my age. We were talking and having fun, but it was nothing too serious. Or so I thought. We exchanged phone numbers and we hung out a couple times, but he became incredibly clingy from the start. So I decided to distance myself in the hope that he would get the hint and back off. Well, he didn't. When I stopped responding, he sent me over a hundred messages, with each message becoming increasingly more aggressive as time went on. Keep in mind, it had been less than two weeks since we first met. I finally responded and told him that he needed to chill out. He appeared to calm down a bit after I responded, but he then asked for a phone call. I agreed, and we talked for a while. He told me that he couldn't stop thinking about me, that I was the best thing that ever happened to him, etc. Just a bunch of stuff that is way too intense to someone to say you barely know. I tried to let him down gently reminding him that I was only home for summer and wasn't looking for anything serious beyond the fling. But this only made him angrier. He started yelling at me, insulting me, and calling me a slut. Basically a complete 180 from what he had been saying mere minutes ago. Then, all of a sudden, the phone went silent. After a pause, he said in a quiet voice, Bitch, you better get ready, because I'm coming over for you. And then he hung up the phone. This was very frightening, because he knew my parents were out of town for the week, and that I was staying at their house alone. However, he didn't know where my parents' house was because I was always the one driving and he didn't know my friend either. So I thought that he had no way of figuring it out. Since again, I'm normally living at school in another state. Regardless, I locked all the doors and shut the blinds just in case. After a while, maybe an hour or so, I fell asleep. When I woke up, I looked up at my phone and saw a notification on my lock screen. It was the Ring app, indicating that there had been movement on my parents' camera. It was him. 
If you watch the video, you can clearly see something in his hand. When he notices the camera, however, he left. I immediately blocked him on everything and reported the incident. I have no idea what he planned to do once he got here. It was terrifying to realize that he had come over while I was asleep and defenseless and completely unaware of his presence. As I would later find out, he was able to get my address from my phone number. Apparently he Googled it and it returned my dad's name as the owner of the phone number along with my parents' address. Since I'm on my parents' phone plan, I guess it shows up that I still live here. This revelation was fucking horrifying as I never knew my phone number could reveal my home address. I'm so extremely upset that this kind of private information is on the internet for anyone to find as it is incredibly dangerous that websites would just give it away to anyone. Please learn from my mistakes and do not give anyone your phone number unless you trust them. I found out that you can get a free Google voice number to text or call people and that number can't be tracked back to you so easily. My advice is that you use a disposable phone number for anyone that you're talking to that you meet informally or online. I still can't sleep at night. Hopefully this never happens to anyone else. Here's the link to the video of the guy. Despite the video being very short, we can clearly see the person who the OP is talking about. And if you pause it right here, we can see that something is in their hand, which appears to be a firearm. The fact that this person only knew the OP for a short amount of time, but was willing to go to these lengths is sickening. Unfortunately, like many of the stalking cases we've encountered, the police seem to be of little to no help for the OP. You reported this to the cops, right? Yes, but they were surprisingly dismissive. Our area has had a substantial uptick in crime lately. Lots of homeless camps around, so I guess this wasn't considered very high under priorities. They kind of made me feel like it was my fault to be honest. Told me to make sure I lock my doors, change my phone number, and to call them back if he comes by again. Yeah. Oh man, I'm super sorry to hear that, but calling them was a smart thing to do. I'd go back during the day and see if there is someone else you can speak to about getting a proper report filed. Maybe even a restraining order. This guy is going to do this to other women if the cops don't put some serious pressure on him. A user by the name PeachCat22 would also share their friend's experience with another creepy stalker. My bestie got involved with a guy like that and to this day, he still finds a way to stalk her and let her know that he is watching her. She has a restraining order and everything. She's gone to court over it plenty of times and she's not the only girl he's done this to. To this day, that POS still makes random accounts to try to follow me to find out more about her. Therefore, my advice is to inform all of your friends to be on lookout for shady follow requests. Please avoid posting stories on social media. I know it sucks, but you might consider going dark on all socials altogether or making social accounts that use an alias. It is way too easy to be stalked these days, and if he's already willing to escalate to a firearm, you have no clue what else he's capable of. I would also recommend getting a second ring camera and hiding it, or car cameras. He could come back and try to dismantle the one he already knows about, and obviously change your phone number. Sadly, because you don't know if the story ends here, you may also want to consider how to protect yourself. I carry a taser. I have also been trained on how to use knives so that they don't get taken away from me. It's a good life skill to know self-defense, so maybe start watching videos or sign up for a class right away. Sorry if this happened to you. I hope for your sake that this is an isolated incident and that you are able to disengage from him easily. Another user by the name Elder Millennial would comment this. Okay, so it looks like he got out of the vehicle on the street with the lights on. After he saw the camera, he didn't walk back to that car. Did he go around the other side of the house trying to get in? I'm so glad you reported this to the police. That is something I've been wondering about as well. The camera only started recording when he arrived, so I can't say for sure he came out of that car. I know he doesn't own one, which would mean that a friend or relative had knowingly driven him to my house with a weapon. Fortunately, the OP has not posted about another encounter with this individual, and hopefully will never have to. I strongly encourage everyone to take the OP's advice and not give anybody that you don't trust your personal phone number, because with just that small piece of information, Anybody could uncover a lot more information about you than they should. Our final story comes from the Creepy Encounter subreddit and was uploaded by the user Ali Stu on May 7th of 2023. The first post is titled Balcony Visitor and it reads like this. Hello, for context, I'm a woman living alone in my apartment that is located on the ground floor, and so my balcony is very visible for others to see. Every night, I go to work at 4 a.m., so I leave around 3.40. 
Unfortunately, in France, they decided to turn off the lights from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., I think. But thankfully for me, the landlord where I live turned on the lights just for me from 3 a.m. to 4 a.m. It's very dim, but I'm thankful for it still. This Thursday night, like always, I got in my car, locked it, turned on my lights, and something caught my eye, so I looked up. I thought that it was just a cat jumping from my balcony because they love to come by and look around and leave. But this was not a cat. It was a man standing next to my balcony. I think that my light surprised them. And I'm looking at him walk away from me in the grass, but he can't leave that way. So I'm just staring at him, scared and calmly crying, not knowing what to do for like 10 seconds. But then I see movement again, and it's him walking towards me, looking at me quickly. And then he just continued walking to the main road like nothing happened. He takes one last look at me in my car before I lose sight of him. Also, he was wearing black sweatpants and a camo jacket. I don't know what he was doing here, if he was just sleeping on my plastic sofa on my balcony, or I don't know. But I can't stop thinking about his face looking at me, or what could have happened if it was pitch black outside. I wanted to make a report to the police, but they say they can't because there's no damage. The lady also told me, no, but maybe it wasn't for you. Maybe he was looking around for a dwelling. And I said, at this hour and this outfit, I don't think so. And then she replied, no, I'm talking robbery. Like no shit, Sherlock. Since then, every night I run like crazy to my car with pepper spray in my hand. Also, I bought a surveillance camera on my balcony just to check before going out at night because I'm super paranoid and I'm kind of developing OCD. I have to look and check outside before going to sleep. Dear random man, let's not meet again. Commenters were quick to give advice to the OP in case they ran into this person again. If you have close neighbors, get loud. Embarrassing and calling out criminals gets them to leave. Quickly. Worked when two guys busted in while I was home once. I screamed so loud and acted so crazy, they got scared of all five feet of me and left. It also helps your neighborhood so they can keep on the lookout. Staying silent puts you in danger in a situation like that. If I think somebody is in my house or following me, I turn into Medea on a real bad day. I have lots of neighbors in my apartment complex, but it's mostly old people, I think. I couldn't even do something because I was so shocked to see someone, but you're so right. Next time I'll make a huge scene, even if it is 3 a.m. Especially if it's 3 a.m. Wake everyone. They don't want you hurt, but they're asleep. Ask your apartment manager if there's an unused unit higher up in the same building. Living on the ground level is the most vulnerable, and moving from one unit to a higher unit is much less difficult than changing buildings altogether, which is worth considering as well. There is no higher unit available. The apartment complex is full at the moment. It's the first time I'm having this problem, so I'm really stuck and don't know what to do, but thank you for your help. Sorry to hear there's no higher up unit. If you know this only because there's a no vacancy sign up, Tell the manager you want to move upstairs when there is a vacancy, and why. They need to know that there's a prowler anyways. Forgot to say, if your door to the patio is a sliding glass one, get a wooden dowel from the hardware store. Measure the inside track of your door first, then go down to the hardware store and have a dowel cut two inches shorter than that to lay down in that track. That way, the door can be jimmied open more than a tiny bit, but it's not so tight that you can't easily drop a dowel in there. And if you have horizontal blinds, get curtains. If you forget to turn those blinds the right direction and they're not 100% flat to each other, a person can look down through them. And for about three whole months, we would not get an update from the OP until August 28th of 2023, around two weeks from the time of this original recording, when the OP would come back with an unsettling update. Hello, three months ago I wrote this post. Since then, for my own security and comfort, I've decided to buy a surveillance camera. The position is perfect and I can move the camera from my phone even if I'm not home. This is where it's getting even weirder. So the first time I saw someone was the 4th of May at 3.40 a.m. In June, nothing happened. So I thought maybe it was a one-time thing, like wrong place, wrong time. 4th of July, I'm getting ready at around 3 a.m. And 20 minutes later, I see a notification from the camera on my phone. I didn't get nervous because sometimes my camera just captures bugs or spiders. But oh boy, my heart skipped a beat. I opened the notification and the video started. I saw a man walking straight next to my balcony and he's hiding his face. I froze for like five minutes and I decided to call the cops because I didn't know if he was still here because the camera didn't send any notifications after that. I noticed that sometimes my camera doesn't capture everything. The cops came and he wasn't here anymore. I was weirded out about the situation. 23rd of August, I left for work at 3.45 a.m. Yes, precisely. While I was driving, I get the notification at 3.47. It's again the same dude from July. He's still hiding his face, but I can't recognize his gait. I called the cops right away and we met at my place. I was crying and explained that this wasn't the first time it happened, that I didn't feel safe, and that I couldn't understand why this was happening. The male cops were minimizing the situation, 
and that got me so pissed because they could see that I was confused and scared, but they kept saying no need to worry. Maybe he's not here for you. I don't care. It's 3 a.m. and it's dark outside, and some random dude is close to my place. Anyways, they couldn't do anything because there was no damages. I decided to lay down a handrail, just in case, even though I know they can't do anything. I'm still nervous every night when I have to go to work. I got my pepper spray with me just in case. Also, I got great neighbors around me that kind of helped me in some ways. But I don't know why he's here, and why in the middle of the night. No idea. I'm sure I forgot some details, so feel free to ask questions. Thank you for reading. At this point, I did start to grow concerned for the OP. If this is a stalker, they could be familiar with the OP's work schedule, and know when they're about to leave, or have already left for work. The comments under this post went like this. Do you have a sliding glass door to get to your balcony? Put a piece of wood or a metal rod on the side of the door track when the door is shut. Type sliding glass door lock into Google and you'll see what I mean. I only say this because every balcony and apartments seem to have sliding glass doors. I do have one already. My neighbor gave me one. It's not a sliding one, it's a big window glass door kind of thing. Can you get a very bright motion detector light that shines on your balcony or front door whenever there's movement? Can you try to change your schedule? Your pattern, unfortunately, makes it easy for someone to plan something. If not permanently, can you change your schedule for even two weeks? That way he might think that you're no longer leaving at night. For the exterior glass door, they sell those sound alarms that wedge underneath the door. Even if there is no sound, the wedge is very, very effective and would give you time. Lastly, can you put a lock on your internal bedroom door? When my husband traveled for work, it was very obvious because his car would be gone. So he put a lock on the interior bedroom door and it gave me peace of mind. Because even if someone was able to breach the exterior door, I know they will be surprised and slowed down by the extra lock. Another important thing is blackout curtains. It makes it more difficult for someone to case the place and see what you're up to and when you're asleep. Lastly, can you consider a dog? A barking dog and bright motion lights are probably the biggest deterrents. A dog will also warn you by their behavior if there's someone outside. I'm going to copy and paste this for everyone that I'm answering to. It happened again today, 29th of August at 3.04 a.m. I'm tired. Yes, I could have another light other than the lamp that I have outside next to my balcony. I talked to my boss about it, and he said that I could come in later at like 6am. And I don't know his pattern. The nights are so random I cannot know in advance when he'll come. Great suggestion for the lock and curtains. I'll look into it. And lastly, the dog. It's not the first time I heard that, but I don't feel confident enough to have one right now. And I don't want just a security dog, but also a company. It's so complicated. Thank you so much. A few days after this post, the OP would come back with one last and final update, but this time, they made sure to provide video from the security cameras. The commenters under this post seemed a bit more divided than in the other ones, but I'll read the post, play the videos, and then go over some of the comments and let you decide for yourself. First of all, thanks to everyone for all the recommendations and the sweet messages. I didn't expect that. So like I said to some comments that I answered to on the 23rd of August, it happened again on the 29th. With my neighbors, we talked about installing another camera in a hiding spot. Maybe that way I can record him without him hiding his face. Also, I live in France, so I don't think we have bear spray, but I'll ask for a stronger spray just in case. I think I also have a whistle somewhere in my house, so that's kind of an alarm, right? Here are the videos that I talked about. I hope it's working. So it happened four times now. The first time it happened, I didn't have a camera, yet he was really next to my balcony on the right of the video. From my balcony, I have access to my balcony and bedroom. And every time he's there, I'm already awake so my lights are on. I think it was him the first time. And because I saw his face that time, I think now he's hiding it. And yes, I showed the videos to the police. Edit, the way he is headed on the side, I also have windows for my kitchen. So I feel like he's still close to me. Thank you again so much. The comments on this post went like this. He is 100% hiding his face from the camera. If he was just passing by, he wouldn't be bothered about anything being seen. I mean, if I was just walking by to cut through and get somewhere, I probably wouldn't have even noticed the camera, right? Or if he wasn't feeling guilty as well, it's really creepy. I'm just seeing a guy walking home every night from work. 
possibly taking a shortcut and then shielding his face from a super bright light as he passes your balcony. The shortcut is impossible and also it's a private property and he's coming from the main street. He doesn't live here and he's not here every night, but he is always here when I have to go to work, not on the days when I'm not working. We don't have a layout of the property, so I'm unable to determine if this person is just a late night commuter taking a shortcut through their neighbor's yard. But according to the OP, this is the private property and any neighbor should have no reason to be there at all. I will admit that at first I did assume that this person was inside of the neighbor's balcony or at least a lot closer than the video shows. But after looking at the footage, I'm a little bit more unsure now. Regardless, I do think it's weird to be in someone's yard late at night, even if there is a shortcut. One commenter would say this, he never seems to linger or appear even the slightest bit interested in your residence. This is not the downplay your situation. I had a similar terror in years past, which resulted in a near butt naked meth head in my living room. And yeah, he gained entry through the slider. There was history of him knocking and tapping on doors and windows as well as peeping. Is this man on your property when he cuts through the grass? Or is he walking on a public sidewalk? If it's private property, then he could be in violation of trespass. But since you're in France, I don't know the laws. He doesn't seem to appear homeless or on any kind of mind or mood altering substance. Are drugs an issue where you live? Are there homeless encampments nearby? Or perhaps just a small patch of wooded area, even just a small stand of trees. What exactly is on the side of the house? If it's just the backyard, then yeah, I'd be on extra, extra high alert. As for other places to check, does your landlord have any kind of basement or storage facility? Speaking from a different experience, I had tenants who conveniently didn't tell me about sounds under their house for fear of being evicted. They only told me, oh, yeah, so that's what it was. When I found the mattress and sleeping bag in my basement, the guy had dug under the foundation. Anyway, I shared this fun little anecdote just because the nooks and crannies are worth a look. Just bring a friend, a big friend, in the daytime. Also, in terms of catching his face, have you considered turning off the lights and using a night vision camera? I'm wondering if part of shielding his face is because it's bright and night blinding. Like how they show in movies or teach in self-defense classes. Shining a bright light directly at an attacker or perp renders them unable to fully see you. Funny enough, the timestamps of his activity are pretty consistent. 3.07 a.m., 3.47 a.m., and 3.04 a.m. Maybe you guys are just commuting buddies. But for real, better safe than sorry. I don't know if this is common where you are, but on the sides of some alleys and buildings in the States, homeowners use a blue light for the side of the house. Why, you ask? Yeah, I wanted the same with my buddy's side walkway in San Francisco. After asking what the creepy blue light was about, he seemed genuinely surprised that I'd never seen that before. To which my buddy chuckled and said, go look at your arm under the light. So can you see any veins? Yeah, neither can the efforts who are leaving their needles where I walk. So yeah, maybe not relevant to the situation, but still a useful tidbit. As far as an extra hidden camera, you could try maybe a trail cam. It's meant to catch wildlife, but I don't see why I couldn't catch your balcony, bro. Might be cheaper than another camera like you have or if at least be more easily hidden in bushes. Anyway, sorry for the long post with personal anecdotes and tidbits. It's just that I went through something similar-ish in that it involved multiple police visits and cameras. No one was hurt when I was there at least, but there was reason to believe that he had maybe been involved in SA a year prior at the same property and they couldn't arrest him because he only trespasses and didn't intend to do anything further or greater harm. Which is why I was saying that even though he doesn't look sketchy per se, an overabundance of caution couldn't really hurt. As for my nighttime visitor, he left an indelible mark on my anxiety. It was an all around bad time. I'm sure I have even more weird advice that I just couldn't think of at the moment. But ultimately, my unsolicited two cents is that from the second I was afraid to fall asleep in my own home, my home was no longer mine and that it was no longer a place of solace, comfort or refuge. I tried to stick it out, but ultimately moved. It still kind of feels like he won, but I'm not tied up in knots whether something scary threatening or violent will happen each and every night. The OP did reply to this comment. Yeah, he's still on my property which is private originally. I never saw him around where I live in the daytime and he's always coming back from the main street so he doesn't live here, I'm pretty sure of that. I don't know what he's doing on the side of the residence because I still have windows on the side and it's from my kitchen. And yes, he is really consistent about the hour but never the day. Yes, the blue light is common here too but only in the toilets of nightclubs. And they couldn't arrest him because he only trespasses and didn't show any intent to greater harm? Yep, same. I feel pretty anxious because from my balcony, I can go to my bedroom also, not only my living room. I had a nightmare feeling like he was watching me sleep or waiting on the side for me.
This was one of the last comments that the OP gave us on the situation. And with this post being so recent, we have no more information to go off of. But I will link the OP's profile in the description so that you can check out for any potential updates in the future yourself. After watching these videos myself, I will admit that I'm not fully convinced that this person is stalking the OP, but their behavior is weird. I think it could be possible that this is just another late night commuter, but regardless of any of that, it doesn't hurt to be overly cautious, because nowadays, you never know what somebody's intentions are, especially this late at night. I do really hope that for the OP's sake, this is just a misunderstanding, but until we get an update, all we can do is theorize. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments if you think this person was really stalking the OP or if they're just walking through. Leave a like if you made it this far and subscribe to help support the channel. I want to give a big shout out to the Cole Crew family. And if you'd like to join the Cole Crew yourself, all you have to do is become a channel member for only 99 cents a month, which will give you access to previous live streams, the Cole Coffin emojis, and your username shouted out at the end of every video. I will be doing members only content in the future that'll be darker and more unfiltered than what I'm able to put on the main channel. So if you don't want to miss out on that, click the link in the description. Anyways, that's all for this video. I'm Cold Coffin, and as always, thanks for watching.